I think what surprised me the most was that when I looked at all of the effects uh, on all of the changes in males and females, that they all seem to be getting worse at about the same rate, 1% per year, whether it was fertility, number of children born, sperm count, miscarriage rate, um, genital birth defects, and so on and so forth, was all about 1% per year, which made me feel like, wow, that's kind of surprising. And it suggests that they are related uh, to a common cause and occur at a common time. And what is to blame for the drop in fertility? What was that common cause? <laughs> yeah, so I, I just want to say that fertility is complicated. Of course, it has male and female components. It has the element of choice. But what's common to the decline in sperm count and increases in miscarriage and decreases in, in the birth rate are exposures to chemicals in our environment, what we call everywhere, everyday chemicals that have the ability to alter our body's natural hormones. And what sort of chemicals are we talking about? We're talking about um, chemicals that are in our daily lives all the time. Uh, they come in through plastic bottles. Uh, they come in through tin cans. They come in through um, flame retardants in our cushions, our wall coverings, our floor coverings, and uh, our makeup, our uh, skincare products. Um, they all contain these chemicals, which we call endocrine disruptors because they disrupt the endocrine or the hormone system. So yes, in foods, that's a major source of exposure to phthalates and bisphenol A, which are two big classes of chemicals of concern and ones that I've studied for a long time. Mm. And as well, you talk about how in the book that this is not limited to the generation of newborns and how this can be passed down from one generation to the next. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that and how that works? Yes. So when the mother is exposed to one of these chemicals through any of the means that I've described, um, then her fetus that she's carrying is exposed as well. There's no protection, no placental barrier, it goes right through. And then that fetus is exposed and the, the germ cells that are in the fetus, the cells that will go on to be the sperm and the egg of the next generation are exposed. So we have three generations directly exposed when the mother is exposed herself. And then there's other evidence suggesting that even further generations can be exposed through a mechanism called epigenetic changes. And Dr. Swan, what can we do to protect ourselves and our children? Yes, well, this is a big question, very complicated, many things that we have to do. There are the personal things and then there are societal things. And on the personal level, we can make lifestyle changes, which we go into detail about in our book, Countdown, um, but some simple things might be swapping out um, any plastics that come in contact with food that are in your kitchen and replacing them with glass and ceramics and metal, um, and also being careful about what's in the products that we buy and bring into our house and put on our skin, So and do that by reading the labels, although this is difficult because most of these chemicals are not actually contained on labels. So you might want to check out in some of the environmental websites um, uh, what the chemicals are in the products you're buying.